Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Finnovate podcast. We are talking to our Finnovate Europe Best of Show winners. And joining me today, we have Everett Cole, the founder of Debilia. Everett, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Really excited to be here. So for anybody who hasn't seen your demo video yet, uh, which again, you can do at finnovate.com slash videos, it is available there. And I would encourage you to, to check it out. But for anybody who hasn't seen your demo, can you just give us a, a quick overview of what Debilia is and how it works? Of course, yeah. So Debilia is a digital memorabilia marketplace. We leverage blockchain and NFT technology. And we're really focused on making NFTs available for everybody, especially the creator economy, including musicians, influencers, and content creators. But we also believe that everybody has their own iconic moments, whether that's within their friend group or whatever it is. Um, and we want to revolutionize this collecting of moments and memorabilia for everybody. And that's the focus of our platform. Really excited to be here today. Yeah, excellent. No, it's, it's a cool demo. Um, but let's let's start by taking a really big step back. You know, if you a year ago asked people to think about solutions built on blockchain and what you can do with it, very few of them were likely to come back and talk about something related to collectors or artists. You know, can you give our listeners a little bit of background on, on what motivated you to build out Debilia and why you know, NFTs are really well suited for fans and collectors of these type of performers? Of course, yeah. So my journey begins about five years ago with this company. Actually, uh, back then I was a teenager. I was heavily involved with music uh, and influencer culture. Um, and I really enjoyed finding smaller artists and uh, influencers. And I'd watch them blow up and uh, start to become household names. And I thought to myself, like, oh, man, if, if only I was this good at finding uh, people who would make it. If I could do that with companies, like, I'd be a millionaire. And then right there. And then I was like, whoa, what if there was a stock market for musicians? And then I kind of started thinking about that idea, but there are were, there were lots of issues around that, like with securities and, uh, and setting up a whole platform like that. And then in 2017, the very first NFT project was uh, released, CryptoKitties. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. And that was sort of a eureka moment for me. Instantly, I was like, oh my God, NFTs can be used to do this way to invest in influencers. It'll be a collectible online, so it'll be easy for everybody. And that was kind of like what started this journey for me. And it's, it's always been about NFTs for musicians and influencers. Yeah, no, I think that's really interesting. You know, I don't have that kind of experience with um, from the musical side, but I've been fortunate to be at a couple of uh, first games ever for a sports franchise. I got to see the Colorado Rockies first game uh, when they joined the major leagues in 1993. I also got to see the Seattle Sounders when they joined the MLS for their first game in 2009. And, and you get a little bit of memorabilia sometimes for those opening day, you know, inaugural day, but that doesn't really stand the test of time. And, and I do kind of look at it and think, you know, I wish I had something from those moments to, to say, you know, yes, I was there. I saw this as a, you know, it turns out to be, you know, maybe Sounders may be a better example than the Rockies who are just abysmal and going to stay abysmal. But it is cool when you have something that you can kind of tie yourself to these emotional moments where you see something and you, you perceive, you know, this is a big moment. This is a start of something. And, and so I think that's a really cool thing to be able to tap into and then to you know, be able to kind of monetize it and, and sort of invest in it in a way is is really interesting. So, um, you know, th this kind of reminds me of an old joke. It goes like this, you know, how did the hipster burn his mouth? He drank his coffee before it was cool. You know, I, I feel like a lot of the big music lovers I know love to tout the fact that they knew of a band or performer before everyone else did. Um, but are you seeing that desire translate into, you know, a desire to prove it with this kind of digital collectible? Yeah. Right now, the NFT space, there's a lot of uh, hype around it, obviously. And there's a lot of people who are kind of have FOMO and really want to get into the space. So this idea of uh, hipsters wanting to get in there and, and prove that they were the first ones to become a fan of a certain musician is what I see the future being. But today, um, the industry is kind of doing catch up. So we see these really big musicians and influencers uh, making NFTs out of their already biggest moments. And the NFTs that are getting the most light are already from well-established musicians and influencers, brands, everything like that. But 
in the future, I definitely see this being a really big uh, reason for why you want to buy an NFT. Just exactly to prove who uh, you were a fan of, to prove that you were an original fan, uh, to prove that you were there to witness a moment. And it can also act as an investment. And then again, in the future, there'll be like more utility around this. Um, maybe even if you go to an event, a uh, live show, let's say you'll be able to collect an NFT and prove that you were there, prove that you were an original fan. Um, so yeah, I, I see that as the future, but right now it's not really the focus. Sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think, you know, one, one really interesting kind of distinction here is there's sort of two angles here. There's a difference between an NFT as a collectible and as an asset class. And, and obviously, you know, they, a good one will sort of have a foot in each camp. But I think when you, when you talk about it as a collectible, you get this sort of emotional connection, this like personal connection to it. And, and the way collectors view things is really different from the way investors view things. Obviously, a collector wants the, the piece that they've collected to appreciate in value, but it's not an investment in the same way that you would just go, you know, simply buy a stock or something like that. And I think that's one of the pieces that I also think is really unique about this. You're kind of giving people an outlet for this emotional emotional connection to artists that they enjoy, somebody that they really you know, can, can get almost a personal stake in the ongoing success of that artist or performer. Yeah, 100%. This type of investing, like buying collectibles, uh, is called passion-related investing. And there's a like, really cool psychology behind it. Um, you get this uh, sort of social equity for having collectibles. You know, you can talk to people about the collectibles you own, um, it helps improve human interaction with other people. It's really, really cool. And people are, are generally a lot more passionate about musicians or, or TV shows or things in popular culture. So it's a lot easier to talk about uh, that you've invested in a certain musician than it is just talking about investing in a, in a company. So I think uh, that's where we'll see a lot of growth. People love talking about this stuff. And that's why it's exploded so much recently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And certainly has become a really a hot topic, no question about it. Um, you know, so so coming back to your demo in, in specific here, you know, one of the things that I thought was really cool about your demo that probably a lot of people would have missed, you know, when you did that demo once, you couldn't actually do it again. And, and this is one of the things where, you know, if you're live and on stage, you sort of see this when, when you have a video, it's, it's difficult maybe to pull that out. But um, because you'd already created that memorabilia once, you couldn't create the same thing again. You were limited to that one time. Can you talk Talk a little bit about what exactly was happening there, because I think that's there's something really illustrative of how Debilia works in that story. Yeah, hundred percent. So NFTs, non fungible tokens, uh, they're unique assets, right? So you want to make sure that uh, when you're creating one and selling it, that is really the only one that exists. And uh, the blockchain NFT technology behind it allows people to have this unique digital asset. It's uh, completely unique on the blockchain, but then it also allows you to take that NFT and bring it from one platform to another platform. So you're not just relying on the original platform that you made it on. So, and that introduces this idea of unique, uh, it becoming a unique digital asset and you have true digital ownership of it. That's what's so beautiful about NFTs. Uh, and with our platform, we have uh, these certain things in place to, to uh, make sure people don't make mistakes. Um, I'll tell you like a, a little horror story that actually a digital artist friend of mine uh, encountered. They were making this collection of 10 um, one of ones for uh, digital art that they created. And they were on a site and they uploaded their 10, 10, of, uh, 10 one of ones. And then a few days later, they realized that they'd accidentally double uploaded one of the pieces of art. So there was in fact 11 but only 10 pieces of art. So these two duplicates were both bought and he had to go to one of the people, the, the second one that bought one, explain what had happened uh, and then create an entirely new piece of art and sell it or gift it back to this person. And that kind of affected his reputation um, negatively and affected the reputation of the platform because there's a lot of trust um, on these sites that if you say, this is the only digital photo I'm going to release, um, of this one piece of art or this one song. Other sites don't have a safeguard there, making sure that you are really only making one of these uh, and you're true to your words. So you have to trust these artists or these musicians, whoever it is that's creating them, that they are really only creating one. Whereas with Debelia, we have it built in that uh, you can't accidentally release two of the same one. So I think that's a really important aspect to Debelia and how our company operates. 
Yeah, well, certainly, you know, when when you have something that kind of pulls at that thread, that trustworthiness thread, it can be really difficult to to regain it. And so I think that's a really important piece. And certainly, you know, that must have been a very awkward conversation to be able to go back and say, oh, sorry, that thing you bought, which you thought was unique and one of a kind, actually, I sold two of them, is a, it's going to be a tough, tough conversation. So, um, you know, we've got a little bit of time left, I'd like to close by just kind of zooming way out and, and thinking about, you know, uh, the future of NFTs as a concept, obviously, there's a ton of speculation, a lot of activity right now. What do you see as kind of a long-term future for NFTs in general and then Debilia in particular? Yeah, so we go back to 2009 when uh, Bitcoin was first invented and introduced. Um, it's been growing pretty steadily uh, since then, and it's just continuing to get more people involved in the space. But we see that uh, over half of the people who are invested in the space they're just there for the investment purposes. They don't really care too much about the technology behind it. Uh, they're just putting money in in hopes of getting money out. But we see NFTs kind of bridging this gap of adding more utility into the crypto space and also bringing it into the world of pop culture, um, which will bring a lot more publicity to crypto and, and NFTs and the whole space and the whole uh, space in general. Of course, there will be ups and downs as there is with uh, any emerging technology. Uh, but Debili is here for the long term. Uh, and we're really focused on that pop culture side of it, uh, accessibility for everybody, and the utility that these NFTs can bring to people in the future. Yeah, that, that's excellent. I think that's a great place to leave the conversation. You know, congratulations again on your best of show win at Finnovate Europe. Um, again, for anybody who hasn't seen it, check out their demo at finnovate.com slash videos. The company is Debilia, spelled D-B-I-L-I-A. I don't know why I spelled that. You're probably looking at it in the episode description right now anyway, but there it is for you. Everett, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a real pleasure catching up and chatting a little bit more. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it was an amazing event. Take care. You too. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening. 